You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. We have with us today uh, Charles Warner, who has a book that's a finalist for the High Plains Book Awards. Uh, the book is called Birds, Bones, and Beetles, The Improbable Career and Remarkable Legacy of University of Kansas naturalist Charles D. Bunker. And we're going to talk about that book in a minute. But first, maybe, Chuck, we could talk a little bit about you. Well, tell us about yourself. Okay. Uh, well, you're right. You, you started off introducing me as Charles, and I go by Chuck. Charles was my grandfather. So... But that's that's fine. Um, uh, I, I was born and, and grew up in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, came to KU, the, came to Lawrence to attend the University of Kansas and, and met my wife and we just never left. Uh, I worked in business, I worked in banking. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would ever write a book like uh, Birds, Bones and Beetles. Uh, one, when you're a when you've you've gone to business school and you've uh, gone to law school and you've written things, but they've always been short, they've always been concise, and they never use any uh, emotion. So that that was something I had to learn. That was why it took me six years to to write this and edit over and over and sort of get my legs under me for being able to write something that's uh, uh, like this book. So you, you actually have a career in, in business and banking, not in writing or in science, but uh, here you are uh, with this book about uh, Charles D. Bunker. Tell us about the book. Well, the, the, the uh, uh, Charles Bunker was an early pioneer at the Natural History Museum at the University of Kansas. He initially was hired in 1895. He, uh, went to Oklahoma for a while, came back, and then he had a, a four-decade career as a curator of birds and mammals. The thing that's unusual about his story is that he only had an eighth-grade education, and so here he was in thriving in academia uh, and, uh, uh, and and having a lot of success, but he, he, he could never teach a class uh, because he didn't have credentials, but he, he taught extensively the, the, the young students. He would t teach them field work, the laboratory work. Uh, he, uh, he developed some things in, in uh, uh, curatorial uh, procedures for cleaning the, the bones reference is that he cleaned the skeletons using these beetles. I, I've got to say when I first looked at this book and started thinking about it, um, you know, it's a bit of a sleeper in a way because he's, it's about a guy who was working in kind of a, uh, an obscure corner of an obscure field. And, uh, right. uh, you know, the, one of the reviews said, uh, that this book would be worth the read for anyone with an interest in the development of university based natural history museums. And I started thinking, um, that's, that's a small group. <laughs> that is a, yeah, you, yeah, you might sell dozens of copies. Let's face it, you know, it's a, so, uh, but, but then I started looking further and I'm finding absolutely everybody who's read this has said it is not for that narrow audience. This, right. this is a much bigger audience. I think part of that is one, it's the topic and two, uh, you know, who in the right mind thinks that, a, 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 as I as I refer to myself, a recovering banker could write a book that would be interesting to the general public? I wrote it for the general public. I I am not a scientist. I am, I, you know, uh, people ask me. It says, wouldn't you like to go out and you know, on a fossil dig in in uh, Montana? But no, I don't. It's too hot, dry out there. I, they'd bore me. But, uh, but, and so it was, it was a challenge. I had to learn the science, at least enough to tell the story, but I also didn't, uh, I, I, it, it was a benefit because I didn't run the risk of getting into the weeds of the science because I didn't really 
you know, I didn't really care for it that much. I mean, I, I appreciate it, but it was not, it wasn't really my, my thing. So, and it really was, a, I wrote the book for a general audience. My wife always thinks that it would have been, it would be good, particularly good for uh, uh, young readers. And partly because of my writing style is, it's very informal. And, and, and I've, I've had comments that it, it's, it, it, my book's an easy read. I take and I think that it's a compliment, not that it's simple, but you know, that it's, and so that's, that, you know, I kind of hope that, that it is taken that way. So I think your, your comment about being a sleeper is probably right for a number of reasons. The, uh, well, I, I don't know if you're going to ask me this or not, but the, the, what prompted me, what started this whole thing in motion to write this book in, uh, 2009, we had a family reunion. My brother and his family are from California. Uh, there's like five of them. They came to Lawrence. My family's in Lawrence and Kansas City area. So we just all together for a weekend. And part of the uh, activities was I contacted the museum because my grandfather had worked up there. And I said, could you give us a tour? And so they arranged for a tour for the family. We all wandered up on the hill uh, one sunny afternoon and we uh, got a tour by the guy who was the head of the uh, curator of mammals. And he says, halfway to, through the tour, he goes, would you be interested in seeing your grandfather's field notes? Well, I didn't know what field note was. And I said, sure, whatever, I'm game. And he showed him, he, so we go back and it's in this dark vault in the back in the hallway up on the top floor and he opens up a, it opens up the vault and shows us a couple of little boxes about the size of cigar boxes. And we took them out of the workroom and he started, we started looking through them. Well, there were field notes from 1911, from 1912, from when he was in Oklahoma in 1901. Uh, there was an, ar an article he typed up uh, about the domestic beetle process, a few things, a few odds and ends, but not a real, uh, you know, not a, not a whole bunch. And then he says, well, wouldn't you like to write a story about, write a book about your grandfather? And I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. I'm not the one. Well, anyway, I sort of played with it for years. Probably by 2011 was when I really got kind of serious about it. And I had to go research. I had to go to the research libraries, the history museums and things like that to get context for it. But that was the thing that set it in motion back in, you know, so it was 10 years in the making because it, 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 2019 in May was when it was published. Well, I think it's a fascinating story and I, I really appreciate the time that you've taken here to, to visit with us about it and uh, best of luck with, uh, with your book. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Nice to, nice to visit with you and, and I, now I will go fix my laptop so I can actually do this another time. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.